Hey folks, it's Ray from DCRamerica.com here. Today I'm going to show you the absolute cheapest way that you can get Zwift up and running uh, from a platform and viewing it kind of standpoint. And that's simply Apple TV. Uh, as of today, Zwift now supports Apple TV and it's available publicly, um, which means that for 149 bucks you can get a completely functional Zwift platform, plus all the other Apple goodness. Um, and for 179 bucks, you can get it with 4K, which is pretty darn incredible. I mean, you can't really build a computer for 150 bucks that will do Zwift any justice. And even if you have like an old computer sitting around your house somewhere, it's probably not gonna look anything as clean as this, uh, especially not for another 30 bucks to get 4K, not a chance. So what I wanna do is kind of walk you through how it all works. It's pretty straightforward, but there are some gotchas to be aware of, and I'm gonna kind of cover those right now. So the very first thing you need to do is to go ahead and go into the apps menu right there. So there we go, App Store, and search for Zwift. Uh, pretty easy and pretty quick and simple. Once you've downloaded the app, it's, it's totally free by the way, um, you'll be able to go and open it up and start Zwift. Uh, now when it comes to compatibility, there is a gotcha there as well. It only supports Apple TV's latest generations, basically the fourth generation and beyond, that support applications. Uh, so if you have an old Apple TV, one that has a, a silver remote control, that won't work. It takes this new remote control right here, uh, the one that you probably completely and totally hate, to make sure that you have uh, applications on your Apple TV. Once you've got it all loaded though, you go down, you simply tap it, and open up Swift. It's really that simple. Uh, at this point, I'll ask you to go ahead and log in. So if you have not logged in before, you'll need to do that. One quick tip is you can turn on your Apple TV, the ability to do voice dictation to it. So you can spell out your entire email address and stuff like that a little bit faster than this keyboard can. Also, if your phone is paired uh, to the Apple TV, you can also just type the menu or the uh, text on there as well. So kind of quick and easy. I'll go ahead and simply tap my name to log in. Okay, so here is the pairing sensor menu. Uh, you can see right there I can pair my power source um, or a speed sensor. So I choose to pair my power source. I've got the Tax Neo. I've got the Watt bike that I'm on right now, as well as the Vector 3 pedals that are on this Watt bike right here. From a signal standpoint, things are pretty darn impressive. Uh, that Tax Neo that you see up there is all the way behind me, about three to four meters away. No, definitely four meters away. Uh, and the Apple TV is tucked up under the TV itself. So no problems with connectivity, which is great. I'm gonna choose the Watt bike though, since that's what I'm sitting on. At this point, you can see it's populated my cadence and my controllable trainer over here uh, with the watt bike. And then you can see my heart rate is this ticker heart rate strap that I have right there. Now there is a bit of a catch here and that the Apple TV can only support two concurrent Bluetooth smart sensors. In my case, the watt bike is one of them and that's supporting power, cadence, and controllable all on that one channel. And the second one is the ticker there, the heart rate strap that I have here. That is the two channels. If I, for example, had an additional cadence sensor or some other sort of sensor in the mix, I'd have to use the mobile app to pair that, uh, which is pretty cool and pretty easy. I can basically go into the mobile app right here on my phone and then go into the pairing set menu and pair those sensors, and then it all works together. So that's useful if you had, for example, a separate speed sensor, a separate cadence sensor, and a heart rate strap, you want to pull them all in there. The next thing when it comes to sensors is it does not support AMP Plus sensors. It's only Bluetooth smart sensors, and that's because Apple only supports Bluetooth smart sensors on the Apple TV. There's a couple ways around that though. Number one is you can use this little device called Cable. It's like 70, 80 bucks, something like that. Um, it's from North Pole Engineering. I put a link up there in the top to uh, Shane Miller, GP Llama's video on cable. A uh, pretty cool little setup. It basically takes AMP plus signals and converts them to Bluetooth Smart. It's super useful in other settings as well. For example, if you were on a treadmill and wanted to do running with Zwift and you had an older Garmin foot pod that's AMP plus, you could use this also to pipe that into Zwift. Cool stuff. At the same time, there's also Four Eyes' Viva strap. So this is a heart rate strap that contains more or less the same thing there, converts AMP plus signals to Bluetooth smart signals. They both have their pros and cons. This gets you heart rate as well as all the conversion stuff. Um, whereas this, you don't have to have wear a heart rate strap. It's tiny, you can just toss it somewhere nearby and you're good to go. They both are basically that same price, like 70, 80 bucks or so. Um, so that's kind of the basics there on sensors. We'll go down here and go into the menu to start riding. You can do workouts as you would in the past. You just go up here to the top. You could say select workout uh, and you can choose the workout from the list there. Pretty straightforward stuff. I'm gonna go and cancel that out though right now and just gonna simply start a ride. Uh, nothing really fancy about it. I'm gonna go down to ride there and you can see in a second or so, it's already sort of picking up my uh, cadence and my heart rate and now my power as well. And you can see there's tons of people around and the frame rates look pretty clean. There's no real issues here. I'm just gonna give me a little more resistance there. Uh, on the Watt bike, you have electronic control resistance on little basically mini shifters down there. So just a bit more so I can click along there. From a navigation standpoint, you're largely gonna use this remote if you want to. So things like changing the direction that you go and stuff like that, you can do it from the remote. But if you don't wanna punch yourself in the balls using this hideous piece of technology, instead, 
use the mobile app. It's a whole heck of a lot easier. Um, on here, I can go ahead and I can look at my dashboard, for example, waters and stuff like that. You can, of course, see that up there as well. The map I can see, I can zoom in and out, which is pretty cool, uh, kind of handy. I can go and look at other people that are Zwifting nearby me. I can, of course, message to them. All the stuff that's been there in the past on the Zwift mobile app, but it's just super easy to use with the Apple TV. And of course, and I can also change the screens as well. So I can swipe to the right. I can change my view there, my camera angle. So you can see right there, just moving things around a little bit. There we go, the cruise past the line there. And you can see all this looks super clean and super nice. I've been using it for a while now. Uh, Zwift on Apple TV actually went to external testers back this past spring and summer. Uh, so I've been using it on and off and it's pretty cool. Like it just works for me. I don't think about it on the 4K version here. It's great, not too shabby. Okay, so there you go, a look at the Zwift on Apple TV. Overall, it works pretty darn good. Definitely check out my full write-up on this down in the description there. I go into a bunch more detail on some of this stuff, including links to all the accessories and things like that you might be interested in. And don't forget to hit that like button at the bottom, as well as the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Have a good one.